What's going on guys? My name is Johnny. Welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to make this side table. I'm going to start this build with the tabletop. These strips were cutoffs from other table legs that I've made in the past. And those table legs were tapered which resulted in these strips being wedges. I wanted this tabletop to have a pretty cool look to it. So I oriented the wedges in different directions. I have 10 of them facing one direction and then the following 10 facing the opposite direction. And that pattern repeats for the width of the table. Clamping up this tabletop was actually a little bit tricky. The wedges wanted to separate from each other, so I used these steel C-channels to hold everything in place. I loosely clamped the C-channel first, and then I started applying clamping pressure in the other direction. The following day I came back and removed all the clamps. At this point, the tabletop was far from flat. So I started flattening it off with the bell sander. And once that was all done, I switched to my orbital sander to smooth it all out. Once I was done sanding, I moved over to the table saw to clean up the final two edges. At this point in the build, I was really unsure of what the table base would look like. So I moved over to SketchUp and went through a couple different variations. This is the design that I ultimately settled on. With the tabletop being finished, we can now move on to constructing the base. And for that, we're using African mahogany. I decided to use African mahogany because of its color. I think it complements the walnut very nicely. After milling all of my material, I could start cutting out the pieces. I started with the table legs that were one and an eighth inch square. Next, I moved on to cutting the stretchers. And these were one and one eighth by seven eighths. Just like the legs, there's four of these pieces. There's one last cut to make on these pieces before I can start marking and cutting out the joinery. And that's cutting them to length. For that, I used my crosscut sled. The fence on my sled wasn't big enough to set a stop block, so I clamped a piece of plywood to the back of my fence and then clamped the block to that piece of plywood to act as a stop block. This little plywood trick actually worked out really, really well. Next, I move on to cutting the half laps, which are going to join these pieces to each other. I start by making the cut on one side of the half lap, then moving my stop lock over to make the cut on the other side. Then using a series of passes, I can remove the material between those two cuts. There was some joinery that needed to be cut by hand. So I pulled out the handsaw and chisels and got to work. This is the area that will connect the two main pieces of the base assembly together. With all the joinery cut, I can now start marking out and cutting the curves. I quickly made this bow, which is a piece of wood, some paracord, and a dowel to help me draw symmetrical curves. Once those are marked out, I jump over to the bandsaw to cut them out. I also added a subtle curve to the end of these stretchers. 
I only cut out these curves on one of the stretchers. After sanding and smoothing it out, I used the pattern bit in my router to duplicate these curves on the remaining three stretchers. After doing a rough assembly, I realized I forgot to film this one section. This is pretty self-explanatory, it's just a series of half laps and it's the exact same thing we've done up until this step. I then move on to cutting the joinery in the stretcher that will join the front and rear leg assemblies. For that, I'm just cutting a mortise and tenon, and I'm cutting the tenon on the table saw the same way we did the half laps. I marked the center line of the tenon and also the center line of where the mortise will be. I lined up those two marks so that I can trace around the tenon and mark out where I need to cut the mortise. I removed the bulk of the material in the mortise using a Forstner bit, and then I came back with chisels to clean up the edges. After making sure all of the joinery fit, it was time to glue up the two leg assemblies. I made sure to use plenty of glue and also clean up the glue squeeze out while it was still wet. After the glue was all dried, it was time to apply the finish on these leg assemblies. And for that, I'm using Mahoney's Finishes Walnut Oil. This is super easy to apply and oil finishes really bring out the natural colors of the wood. It was difficult to get the finish in some of the tight spots, so for that I cut up a foam brush and used that to apply the finish. I love how simple this oil finish was to apply, and if you want to grab your own there's a link down in the description where you can get one. I decided to apply the finish before I added the Kumiko section. And that's because oil finishes tend to yellow lighter colored woods, and I really didn't want that to happen. For the Kumiko section, I decided to use a Nasunoha pattern, and I'm making that out of basswood. These pieces are traditionally mortise and tenon into the surrounding frame. But while I was making the leg assemblies, I didn't feel confident doing that. So I decided to make these pieces tighter than what they would normally be, and I also glued them in place. With that cross section in place, I could take out my Kumiko jigs and start cutting the angles on all the other pieces needed to make up the pattern. If you want to find out how I made these jigs, you can click up here in the cards and there's also a link to the video in the description. Here I'm just doing a dry assembly of all the pieces. Once I know they all fit, I come back with glue to secure them in place. To make the Asanoha pattern, you need three different jigs at three different angles. 45 degrees, 67 and a half degrees, and 22 and a half degrees. I don't go into too much detail on the pattern in this video, but if you would like me to make a separate video on the subject, let me know down in the description. With the Kumiko section all finished up, I can move on to finishing the top. And I'm using the same exact finish as it did as the leg assemblies. Mahoney's finishes, walnut oil.
While the finish on the tabletop dries, I move on to attaching the two leg assemblies to each other. I just pour a little bit of glue into the mortises and spread it around using a toothpick. I then clamp that middle stretcher in place and use the same procedure to attach the upper ones. The next thing to do is to drill the holes that will allow me to mount this base to the tabletop. I start off drilling a hole for the screws and then countersink them so that the head of the screw sits flat with the surface. I also pre-drilled the holes for the screws into the tabletop so I don't risk splitting that wood. Another thing to prevent that is to use a screwdriver to drive in the screws. This also lowers the risk of stripping the holes. And with that, it's all done.